you can stay on time and go ahead and get started. So to give you guys again the general agenda, the way it's going to work is we have 15 minutes here, and then at that point you're able to go between um, staying here or going back to the other room. And so kind of keep an eye on your agenda and what you'd like to see for some of the different technology. Uh, this is pretty informal, so by all means, I think our presenters would like to have a little bit of discussion. So if you have questions or thoughts, anything that is of um, interest, please let them know. Um, but with that, we'll let Prop Metrics um, take it away. All right. Um, I'm Jeff Jeff Preston. I'm here on behalf of Prop Metrics and Prop X. As he said, it's very informal. If you guys have questions, just stop, ask it during the presentation. No big deal. Um, Last couple months, um, well, first of all, has anybody ever used crop metrics in here? All right, we've got a few, got a few. Um, the last couple months, um, we have been acquired by an Israeli company named Crop X. Um, with that comes a very good um, data science team that we were kind of lacking ourselves at crop metrics. Um, and a new piece of hardware that I'll get to. Um, we're, we're still going to offer our traditional Syntec setup, which is a 36 inch uh, D and D probe, nine sensors. Um, we've always said, and the Syntec guy will tell you the same thing. Um, it's, it's a drill and drop. It's, you drill it in a very precise hole. Do you have that? Can I use your uh, drill bit? <laughs> sure. I forgot my charger. <laughs> Um, the probe itself is tapered. It's, it's smaller on the bottom, bigger on the top, and this uh, bit is designed just for that probe. Um, what we've always said is when you drill it, rather than using post hole diggers and making a slurry, you don't disturb the soil layers. The soil layers stay consistent with how they were naturally. Thank you. Um, with the Syntec probe, it's linked to an Accents box, um, and then it has the solar panel and everything. It's about this tall, it's flagged, the whole shoot match. Um, we've used this at Crop Metrics since 2015 and had great results. I use them on my 4,000 acres. Um, be lost without it. Um, that's a slight overview on the Syntec. This is the new Crop X hardware. Um, it also, you drill a small pilot hole and then this has a tool on it that clips on here and just kind of corkscrews into the ground. The only thing with there is no solar panel. Everything is self-contained in here. The batteries is some special battery that lasts 10 months. So at the end of the year, you take it out, plug it in the wall, you charge it. Um, this, is, this is a two, uh, two sensor model or a two foot model. Um, there is also three foot models as well. Um, with this, I am going to, um, it obviously goes in the row too with the corn and then i'm going to put it in early and side dress over the top of it where there is no solar panel in the middle of the row or anything like that we'll see if there's any valuable data there but you guys can look at that if you want to um, this will be the third season for the crop x pro um, before we merged crop x did not have a dealer network they were basically Amazoning these probes to farmers and saying, hey, this is how you install them. Good luck, no dealer network. So now with, with Crop Metrics and Crop X merging, we have a dealer network. Um, both the Syntec and the Crop X will be offered to you guys um, as TAPS contestants. Um, <coughs> they use the same software, don't they? Yes, they do. I was just going to get there. Um, no, you're good. Um, the software with the app, Bio Grow, it was newly introduced last year. 
Uh, that hardware and the Syntec will both go into the same app on your phone, or you can also go online still and do it that way. Um, we'll give you a slight overview here of the app itself. Log in. So at the top, it's basically like a fuel gauge. Your red, kind of a refill. Your middle gives you a uh, good indicator that you're getting close to needing a refill. And the third one is above, above your optimal, we'll say. Um, with both of these systems, you will get weekly water recommendations from a certified um, crop metrics data analyst. Um, those are just recommendations, not the end of the world. If you don't do them, whatever. It's just that that all comes with it. Um, we'll cover the root zone in a different slide. Here is kind of what it'll look like on your app as you get the recommendations. <clears throat> all right, now you can see it. The refill optimal and full. All of your probes will be um, on your home page, and then you just simply touch that probe and it will go into to more detail um, per, per probe. So this is how it'll look when you first open it. It'll have all of your fields with the uh, integrated weather, um, telling you if there's how many of your fields have above a 50% chance of rain or a 30% chance of rain or whatever. Um, at the top there, what we do is we will take the, the crop type, so corn, the relative maturity, and based off of our crop model, it will give us a very, very good idea as to where that rooting depth is. These will sense where, the, where your root depth is from the water that's being pulled out of the profile as well. But included in all of all hardware now has a, what we call the virtual predictor. I don't know if anybody tried that last year. It's a, uh, a crop model, all science. And so from now on, it will, it will predict, it'll show you your past well, I'll just do that slide, how about that? Um, so here's your, your sum as it's going up and down, irrigation events, stair stepping down, refill. These dots here, because you can zoom in, say on just this area, those will predict where your, your um, soil profile is gonna be in the next five days. So you, the hardware itself will give you the past and the current data, and then the crop model will give you the next five days of where it thinks it's gonna be. Hey Jeff, so when it predicts out, does it also forecast any potential rain, or is it as if there would be no rain, where would you be in five days? Yes, um, with that, it uses, um, yeah, it will use the next five days of projected weather, the projected ET, and the historical crop usage that it comes, or that, and all that comes from the setup, or from the hardware setup, I should say. So it gives you a really accurate reading as to, okay, I got a 400 gallon well, here's where I'm gonna be in five days, and you can make accurate management decisions from there. Um, on the right, it's showing you your rooting depths. This is not real accurate, but uh, on the probe itself it is, this graph's kind of goofy, but it will show you your rooting depths from two to 36 inches. So obviously in your top three lines, your crop is, is pulling water from, I think that would be the 10 inch line. So that's where you figure where your rooting depth is. Do I go back from this? Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. Um, so with the irrigations, 
obviously it's going to predict your your rainfall and such with your irrigations um, what i do for my customers is when i know that they actually irrigated i will go in there and mark it as an irrigation event on the right rainfall versus irrigation and that is all it's going to do is um, make the end, end reporting more accurate otherwise the probe will think that everything that you did is rain um, yeah, so there's just just some more of the, the gas gauge I guess you'd say So when these get installed, the installer will basically do the old field test for number one for soil type and number two for moisture. And then off of that, our algorithms kick into place. And that's how uh, basically how we set the fold profile. That's all kind of a, of a manual deal. And then here's the reports for the end of the year. So obviously all of this would be filled in, crop type, maturity, all of that would be filled in. And then event type, that's where if you irrigate, it's nice to put it in that it's an irrigation event rather than a rainfall, just so you can go back and see how many inches of water you put on or whatever, it'd just be, be more accurate. And then uh, this is what what the app looks like as far as the graph. Um, that's the whole, the whole irrigation season. Um, here's your sensors that I was talking about that tells you how far, not only from where your crop is pulling from, but if you get a two inch rain, how far it possibly pushed your uh, nitrogen down. Go ahead. And that sensors on the bottom, are there numbers on the left or not? Or is it just like that? Yeah, there is numbers on the left that signify what, uh, how deep these are. Um, this is just a real short overview. But this, your top sensor is always two inches. So it's not a moisture relative number or anything on the side? Or is it just the depth? Just the, on this one, it's just the depth. This one is actually for your water. This is just measuring how, how deep. The individuals don't have anything related to a water correlation or anything? I guess maybe the question would be what's the y-axis? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, sorry, the probe does measure. I'm not sure if they display it. Yeah, yeah it, it does. So I'm not sure what is over here as far Basically, all this is telling you is where, how deep that irrigation event went. I'm not sure what's over here. I know that these are different sensors. I can't remember, it's been a year since I looked at the app. But the top, that is how many inches of water. Your individual sensors will show your fuel to capacity, though, yes. percentage. Yes. I mean, I don't know if the app does that, but there's also, if you get online. Get you online get, to the, yeah. So you could go to your 20, two inch sensor and it will show 60% fuel capacity. Yep. And they, that's exactly. probably what that is. Yeah. It's a fuel capacity on that side and a depth on the other side. Yeah. yeah. And so then, uh, yeah, you'll just have, it'll print out all your reports and just kind of a good looking report, I guess, at the end of the season, but. That was really quick. Hopefully nobody's terribly confused. Does anybody have any questions besides what was asked? What's the optimal range that you have on your um, soil moisture? <coughs> range? That, the optimal in the middle, you mean? Yeah. <clears throat> that is, so like I said earlier, when we, we measure the moisture content when it's installed. So if it's saturated soil, obviously we're pretty close to the full point. Um, the optimal is basically where our algorithm says for that certain soil type, keep it into in between these ranges for optimal crop health. So it's somewhere between 50% of the available to 
780 or so is available? Um, when I set my refill points, um, I know what my fill capacity is. I'll set my refill point at 65%, and then between 65 and 80 is my optimal of fill capacity, if that makes sense. All right, guys, I apologize. We'll have to continue the conversation after. We're going to go ahead and switch over to the next presentation. Take a look at your agenda. So we have Magnify in this room, and I believe <laughs> it's got other room. Aqua Spy. All right, we'll give you guys about a minute. Yes. Maneuver stumbles right through it.